You've sous vide steaks for a group of friends. You've cooked a tomahawk over an open flame. You're wondering, what else can I do while respecting a great steak? Let's bump up the flavor with a hit of umami. Shio Koji steak is just the thing you're looking for. Here we have some fine looking certified Angus beef strip steaks. We already know that these steaks are gonna be amazing, but we'll give them a special treatment with some Shio Koji. Shio Koji is a fermented rice marinade that is available online or at many Asian markets. Koji is basically a cooked rice inoculated with a mold that ferments the starch in the rice and is the fermenting agents for things like miso and sake. For this method, we'll sous vide the steaks with the Shio Koji after they marinate for a while. You can vacuum seal or use a heavy duty Ziploc bag. I would suggest only putting in two steaks per bag, any more, and it may be a little hard to manage. We use about a quarter cup of Shio Koji so that there is just enough to coat the steaks. If you are vacuum sealing the steaks, make sure that the machine doesn't start to pull the liquid Shio Koji out of the bag. This could inhibit getting a good seal on the bag. Having a perfect vacuum isn't as important as getting a good seal so that it doesn't leak. Move the Shio Koji around in the bag to ensure that the steaks are fully coated in the marinade. For the plastic bag method, it's the same idea, but it doesn't take a vacuum sealer. If you decide to go with the plastic bag method, use the same amount of Shio Koji to marinate the steaks. The key to this method is to zip the bag about three quarters of the way closed and then plunge it into cold water, leaving that quarter of the bag above the surface. The water will push out all of the air and then you can zip the bag the rest of the way. The pressure from the water will push out a good amount of the air trapped inside and leave you with results similar to vacuum sealing. Let these steaks marinate in the refrigerator for an hour before going into a water bath. Now we'll get our steaks into the water bath. For a nice medium rare, I like to set the circulator to 130 degrees Fahrenheit and let them cook for at least one hour. Now that these steaks have cooked all the way through, we'll move on to getting the final sear. After a moist cooking method like this, the steaks will need dried off, so it's useful to go right onto a paper towel lined sheet pan. If you're using the Shio Koji with some of the remaining rice pulp, try to scrape as much off as possible because it tends to burn. You can see a significant change in color. That's a result of the enzymes in the marinade changing the proteins. These changes are made during the marination and the cooking process, which is what brings an interesting flavor to the steaks. They have a boost of umami, as well as a subtle sweetness. Make sure to pat the surface of the steaks dry as well in order to get that beautiful sear. I like to lightly season with salt and pepper at this point. There is already salt in the koji, but not quite enough to season such a large steak properly. You can see how much liquid was on these steaks when they came out of the bag, and they need to be as dry as possible for a nice sear. So now hit that second side with a little seasoning and we can get to searing. Here, we'll compare a grilled steak versus pan searing when finishing the koji marinated strips. The enzymes in the koji convert some of the surface proteins into amino acids, but there are some residual starches from the marinade, so you tend to develop a dark sear extremely quick. This is good since the steaks are already fully cooked and only need a sear to develop the flavor and texture. I like to sear each side quickly, flipping twice rather than just rotating for diamond grill marks. This will help prevent overcooking. Also, hitting that fat cap over the grill helps to render that down and create more of an all over crust. Even though these have been sous vide, it's good to let them rest since they were just over high heat. Now we'll try pan searing with a little bit of oil. No need for butter here because we're cooking them on high heat. I like to flip these a couple of times to ensure proper crust development and also inhibit burning. Frequent flipping also helps to prevent the steaks from cooking too much while in the pan. Again, don't forget to hit that fat cap and give a quick sear to the sides. Once you get a nice sear, onto a cutting board to let them rest. Now that we've had time to let these rest, let's slice into these and see how they're looking. I should have chosen a bigger cutting board for this, struggling a little bit here. Look at that perfect edge to edge medium rare. You'll normally get that doneness from sous vide, but while they're cooking, you're developing a depth of flavor from that marinade. The pan seared looks great as well. 
That is the real beauty of the sous vide technique. Even though some of the steaks are different thicknesses, they all came out with the same perfect medium rare. These have had some time to rest, so let's slice into them and see how they're looking. A little sweet, a kick of umami, plus a little funk. You gotta try the Shio Koji steak. Join us again next time here in the Test Kitchen.